So uh, I've got my bits out ready. I've got an EDR medic kit. Basically, you get a see what I've got. I'll probably be using the uh, the NT Labs. Exactly how much drops that I need to put into the, into the blue chip bucket. It seems like a lot. It sounds a lot, but it really, when you look at a full bottle like that, I can just. Over like this little mark on a gill plate, but that there is just an indentation that she's always ever had. Pull back on it like that. You can see how easy that could wash off 90% of the residue, which is not needed. I'm going to nurse her underneath there and there, and I'm just going to lift her straight into the pond. It's just to hover her right where your water is coming out. Nice flow. Right then, everybody, welcome back. James the Koi Whisperer. So, uh, Basically today, coming up on this video, we're going to get Biggie out. She's got a lifted scale one side. Um, I'm pretty much just going to show you what I do to treat it, what I'm going to do to treat it. Yeah, stick around for this video. I'm going to show you what I'm, you know, I'll run through how I do it. For the people that don't know, you know, the people that don't never do nothing about their fish, they don't never treat. I mean, I'm the type of person that sort of sits on the fence for a little bit. I like to watch for a few days, maybe a couple of days, depending on the circumstances. And then obviously uh, go down the line of getting that fish out and treating it because sometimes by just chucking medications into the pond, treating the whole pond isn't the best way to go about it. But in circumstances, some circumstances it is. It depends how bad the situation is. So all that being said, I've made the decision to take her out. I've left it for a week or so now. I haven't seen any signs of improvement. So uh well, there's me babbling on again. Let's just crack on with the video. So yeah, just before I show you what we're gonna need to get this fish out, obviously the, the bow, the net and everything else, the sock and what treatments that I'm gonna use on the fish. She's got a lifted scale this side and it's just started to get a little bit... <laughs> that You can't really see anything then guys, could you? Big Betty was in the way, but yeah, she's got a lifted scale one side. Um, Basically, what happened was I fitted a retrofit bottom drain, and she just sort of she just flashed against the side of it after a heavy feed, and she just knocked herself on it. And uh, well, it's just something that one of those things that happens. And um, see what I've got. I'll probably be using the uh, the NT Labs Medi Kit there today. Um, I've got some other bits in my pot up here that I'll be using some tamadine and some uh, some some cooler safe stuff that I use for when I go carp fishing. But yeah, I'm gonna grab me sock out, grab the net out from behind the back of the shed there, and then uh, I just this is where I keep my bowl. So um, I am doing a water change at the moment, running through the big blue. But in here is where we keep the bowl. So I'm gonna grab this one out now, and uh, well, I'll be back with you in a sec. Right, so uh, I've got me bits out ready. I've got me, uh, me net, me bow, me sock. Um, I've got all the treatments out that I've got. I've got some tamadine. I've got the paramedic kit there, and I've got some other bits and pieces there that I might use. I've also got me towel that um, I got off me mate, Decoy. Definitely worth checking out his channel. He's got um, some brilliant content, and it'd be really good if people could jump over to his channel, give him a subscribe, because he is a top bloke, and... Uh, I'm really good friends with him so definitely worth checking him out i'll leave a link at the end of this video so you can uh, go to his page and go check him out but um decoy sent me that one last year and it's been an absolute godsend right so uh, as you can see i'm all set up i've got my towel i've got everything what i'll need um the first job is just preparing the actual bath which i'm going to put the koi in so uh with this kit like a kit like this a paramedic kit basically you get a you get a substance called Koi Calm, and it's like clover oil, really. Um, basically, this just sedates the fish, chills the fish out, and calms the fish down, stops it flashing around. But what you need to do is add 10 drops of Koi Calm per five liters of water. So the way I work this out, I use a 12 liter bucket, so I'll work out exactly how much liters that I put into the tub, and then I can work out exactly how much drops that I need to put into the, into the blue bowl. So always use uh, pump, pump water as well. Don't use fresh tap water straight out of your tap with the chlorinator because that don't do you any favours. Just use it straight from your pond. Half a bucket. So 
So now I just want to work out how much water I've got in there. That there's 36 plus another 6, 42, 40, 42 litres of water that I've got in there now. So I'll work out the exact amount of koi carbon that I'm going to add to this and then just add my drops in. So yeah, I've uh, pretty much worked out that I need 80 drops of this koi calm. Um It does seem like a lot, but the drops are very small. So I'm just going to start dropping them in now. I won't talk because I'll sort of lose count of how many I'm putting in and then uh, I'll get back to you in a bit. But I'm just going to slowly add this in now. Well, uh, basically I've got, I've got all of my 80 drops in. So what I do, it seems like a lot, it sounds a lot, but it really, when you look at a full bottle like that, I've barely used hardly any of it. Um, but all I do is just literally mix it right up and it does stink of clover oil, but um, it definitely works. It helps to date the fish. And I just basically give it a good mix up like that. And it's just basically just preparing the bath to start with. Obviously I've got a lot of water in the bowl because she's a big fish. So uh, obviously if I had a lot less water in the bowl, then I wouldn't need to use half as many drops. But that being said, let's just let's just crack on, get her out, because it looks like it could rain, so I want to get this done before it rains, and I'll be back with you in a bit. It's as calm as that, sometimes they get a bit spooky, so if you just hold you like that a second, I can just use the sock straight over her like that. She's a big fish, so she takes up nearly all of this sock. This is a waterproof sock, so I'm basically I've got to drain a bit of the water out. What I like to do is to make sure that her pet fins and her anal fins are all in the right position before I lift her out of the water. And then I just place the fish straight down and just let her out into the koi tarn. From this stage, what is best to do is get rid of that bumblebee, but it's just to sit near her because what can happen is that she can decide to jump, she can decide to flash, but if you'd like to come right in on here a minute, um, basically, whenever you're filling the pond, the whatever treatment that you're doing, you don't wanna have more water, you wanna always make sure that you see the dorsal fin in the water. Any more water than that, the fish has got a chance to flick and jump and come out of, obviously come out of the bowl. And then by that time, instead of treating just for one little wound that I'm going to be treating for um, she could splash around on these stones and cause herself a lot more damage that's part of the reason why people don't like taking their fish out of the out of their pond to do treatments but if you do everything right do everything correctly then uh, doing treatments like this can be so easy to be done but um, I'll probably call in my mate in a minute I'm going to give her roughly around two to three minutes in here at the moment just to really relax really calm down and um, I'll call in my mate because what I'll do, I'll dry off the, the I'm going to dry off the actual infected area. I'm actually going to pull that scale off because it is infected at the moment. So I'm going to pull that scale off. I'm going to use some ulcer swab, which is like a basically it's like a disinfectant. So I'm going to disinfect it. Then I'm going to put some tamadine on it, and then I'm going to seal it up with some wound seal. And uh, basically, that's a three-stage process. And then after that. To seal the wound seal, what you've got to do is you've got to drink, sorry, sprinkle water over the wound seal, let that dry for around five seconds, and then we can put her straight back into the pond, obviously without knocking the wound seal straight back off. It's like a plaster more than anything, but any any infected area there should be um, should be a lot better. It should help her out, and within a couple of days, I should start seeing improvements. If I don't, then I'll have to retreat again. But that being said, I'm just going to leave her here for a couple of minutes. Obviously, I'm going to wait while I'm here, and then uh, I'll be back with you in a minute. She's been in there around two to three minutes now. She just started to turn. That means she's almost ready. I've had a look at the infection. I don't know if you'd like to bring the camera in there in a minute, just so we can show people. Um, she's still a little bit lively, so I'm not going to do too much at the moment. But as you can see, that one scale there has just started to get infected. So what I'm going to do is pull that scale out, it's very very loose there to be fair, I'm going to pull that scale out 
and then get some treatment on it. There's actually two scales there which is infected. But um, I'm just gonna wait until she's a little bit more little bit more out. We'll pull that scale off. I know there's a few people that don't like pulling the scales off of fish, but sometimes it's the best thing to do. Um, sometimes if you remove that infection completely and then uh, obviously she will always have a she will always have a mark there. The scale will grow back eventually, but it will always be noticeable. Um, just one of those things I suppose but I'm doing it for the best obviously I don't want her to get infected get into a bloodstream and then the infection spread and cause myself a lot more issues so as soon as she's out she's almost there now she's just playing up she's almost rolling over if you have a look at the rest of the fish apart from being a little bit stressed out on the fins where she's gone into the gone into the bowl itself she's um She's pretty much perfect to be fair. She's always had this little mark on her gill plate, but that there's just an indentation that she's always ever had. But um, yeah, I'm gonna just pull that scale off because you can see the infection just there. And if you just pull back on it like that, you can see how easy that was to just come off. That just popped off, really easy to do. I will chuck that under my microscope as well, just to make sure that I haven't got, there's not anything else playing around there you can see the little bit of blood there and that's part of the reason why you need to use tamadine now to make sure we get this sealed up but I'm just checking to see what that is a minute I know a lot of people now there's a lot of koi experts out there what would be taking off that scale that scale and that scale to uh, to make sure the infection's not gone underneath. But I'm just checking now. If you can get rid of most of the infection before it's spread. The new scale, I can see there's a new scale coming through underneath. Yeah, and I'm going to go ahead with the treatment now. I'm going to get my friend in to help me. Basically, what I'm going to do, I'm going to completely dry the area. The first job that we're going to use is we're going to put some disinfectant on, which is the OSA swab, and we're just going to pull that straight onto the area, make sure there's no disinfectant there, and don't worry about spreading it. We just literally pull that straight on, like so. Make sure that goes all the way in there. She won't like it, but you can see how I've, I'm just nursing her on my arm and I'm keeping the wound out. So now we're gonna chuck some, um, can't even, uh, uh, tamadine. Gonna chuck some tamadine on it now and we're gonna do exactly the same again. Just pull that straight on the top. Loads of that on there, that's plenty. And then we're just gonna add a little bit of wound seal to make sure that area stays in all sealed up. And then just, just sprinkle the, the water over the top of the wound seal like so. There's a little bit much on there. Um, the reason behind it is that it will come off as soon as she goes back to the pond. But if you can just sprinkle yourself a bit of water on it like that, it will seal, it will cloud up my pond a little bit. As you can see all of this, you just sprinkle it on there, wash off 90% of the residue which is not needed, not round the area. Hopefully that gives her a bit more of a fighting chance. And the first job that we're going to do now is I'm just going to nurse her underneath there and there. And I'm just going to lift her straight into the pond. She's a big fish. She's a big old girl. And I'm just going to take my time with her. And I'm just going to hold her very, very gently. Sit here for 
five minutes or so. Ideally, the best place to sit is just a hoverer, right where your water's coming out, a nice flow. You can put an air pump underneath them. There she goes. She had a little bit of life in her then. I like to hold her. You can just let them fall down to the bottom and they'll come back right. But I just like to make sure that you keep pulling them backwards and then you'll pump oxygen into their, uh, into their gills. It does look like she's knocked off the wound seal straight away, but it has been treated. I will hold the fish in a minute. I'll get my mate just to chuck a bit more on there because she has just knocked a bit of it off. So I'll just lift her up slightly. We'll just chuck a little bit more on there. Sprinkle a bit of water on there. And then I'm just going to hold an egg. I'm not really worried about that, it's a bit torn in the pond. It's not a massive problem. The water clarity will sort itself out. And, uh, yeah, I'm just going to sit here with her a minute, just until she comes back right. It's part of the, part of the things you do to your fish, making sure that, you know, you keep things as best as possible and give them the best chance. And you can see as the water flow is just coming out of my shower there, and she's just getting the oxygen back into her gills, coming back right. And hopefully this time she doesn't knock that wound seal off straight away. It's always good to good to uh, make sure she gets a good 15-20 minutes with it left on there. Um, if, if I notice that there's no massive improvement, I'll get her out and I'll retreat it again. I will get her back right, and I will uh, I will fix the, the actual issue. But this would take about 10-15 minutes. So uh, when she's back swimming around in a second, I'll uh, be back with you in a bit. So there, uh, she's all back in, she's back in swimming around, um, the rest of them are all full of beans at the moment because they wondered what was up, it's not very often that I chuck the old, uh, the, the net in there to bowl one out, so when I do they get a bit, they get, the, you know, it's not so, they're not so confident as such when that goes in, but she's perfectly fine, she's back in swimming around, the wound seal on the side is still on there which is just what I was after it's completely covered her now um, I did I did take out Big Betty as well just really quickly because I noticed on the top of her dorsal fin there was a little bit of red mark I'll just show you so I've done exactly the same treatment to her it was very very minor but I thought well I got the sedate out I'm just as well treat her and uh, hopefully I'll keep an eye on that and make sure that that heals up fine as well but it has clouded up the water a little bit, just down to that um, propellus wound seal, or propellus, whatever they call it, but the wound seal itself. I let the first lot come off, so I retreated again, and uh, it's all on there now, so uh, happy days. Right, so uh, I'll keep you posted on, and obviously let you know what's happening with with Biggie, let you know what, how the treatment actually plans out sort of thing. Um, but yeah, any sort of questions you want to ask me, chuck them down on the uh, chuck them down on the comment section. Always do my best to try to answer. But yeah, I got was using the kit from uh, NT Labs, NT Labs kit. Well worth, well worth a little go if you uh, if you ever thinking about using some sort of treatment like that to start with. As long as it's small treatment and you get on it early. I mean that that's been for me. I did leave it. I mean, when I noticed it and then I saw it, see if it progressed or got worse or, you know, I could have jumped straight on it and treat, treated it. To be fair, it crossed my mind that I should have done that anyway. But, you know, <clears throat> sometimes it's nice just to, you know, see how it plans out and everything else. But, yeah, that being said, look, there's me babbling on like a Jack Russell on eat. But, yeah, with that there being said, <laughs> happy bonding and I'll catch you on the next one. Yeah, so just a real quick update. So this is 24 hours after the treatment. And I thought I'd just show you. If she can turn around for me. Go around that way. Turn around, girl. Big Betty's 
well, within less than 24 hours, that there's looking pretty good. I will do that again, but um, main concern was uh, Biggie. As soon as she turns round, we'll have a look and she's healing up absolutely lovely. So you can see there, massive, massive improvements in less than 24 hours. So uh, that being said, I'll catch you on the next one.